Welcome to this week's episode of the Rangeless Travel Podcast. We're your favorite adventure travel couple. I'm Britt, my partner Ryan, and every Tuesday we share stories and tips to help inspire you to book that next trip. This week we're talking about the five things that you should know before you go to Southeast Asia. Number one. Rolly bag or backpack? Yeah, I would say Backpack. I would say backpack for sure. Yeah. The temptation is always there to go to get, get a rolly bag though because there's so much like easier to move around and things like that. But if you're planning on getting any ways off the beaten track or out of any mm-hmm. like major cities, you need the backpack because a rolly bag is just not going to cut it on the like dirt roads or up cobblestones or anything like that. It's, it's a lot easier to just get in and out of these remote places with a backpack than with a rolly. Yes, and to add to that, I'd say it's because in Asia, the main form of transportation are scooters. Yeah. And motorbikes. So yes, you can tie your rolly bag onto a scooter or a motorbike, but it's a lot harder than just like having your backpack on mm, you and like yeah. jumping on onto a motorbike and like having that just on your back. So that's why I would say backpack. And if you plan on doing any like jungle mm. excursions or something in like Sumatra or Borneo or anything like that, you're, you're not going to bring a rolly. No, you, you, ha- you have to bring a backpack. So yeah. I would say backpack 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you're trying to get in under the like carry on, you want to be at like under 40. No, gal- you want to be at 40 liters. 40 liters. 40, 40 liters. liters yeah. 40 liters is like the same size mm. as a carry on rolly bag. So just stay around 40 liters and you should be able to carry it on. There are some a lot of weight restrictions on Asian airlines that are ridiculous, like mm-hmm. like 11 pounds and it's not going on. So there may be times where you have to check it, you don't have a choice, but about 40 liters should be, should be where it's good to set. Money. Yeah, you wanna bring, for money, you definitely wanna bring crisp $100 bills. Yeah, <clears throat> US, US. US. Or if you're bringing euros, bring crisp 50s. Yeah, because if you're doing any kind of money exchanging, like cash exchange, they only take new crispy ones. If there's any dirt, they won't take it. If it's older, they won't take it. So you want to bring that. And then you want it to be big bills because they give you a better... um, Rate. Yeah, better a better rate. Yeah, they charge you like an almost like five to ten percent extra for twenties. Yeah, so you're better off bringing big bills. Mm-hmm. Make sure they're crisp. Make sure they're new. It's also good to have some money like hidden within your bag so that if something were to happen to your card and you have like to figure out how to get money back out of your card, you have a little bit of money to get you by, so you right. can like get to wherever you need to get. You can stay somewhere and you can eat. Cool. And then I would say in Southeast Asia, you can do it as luxurious or as budget friendly as you want. But I would say 30 to $50 would be the sweet spot, depending on what countries you plan on going to, to eat, stay, experience all the things you need to experience without it like completely being really expensive and like getting out of that yeah, budget that- backpack. Yeah, that allows you to stay in, like, the budget backpack areas. Yeah. Like, you're going to be able to stay at some hostels with other backpackers. Mm -hmm. Uh, The odd, like, not every excursion, but the odd excursion you're going to be able to go on. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it allows you to go out and and eat and get a couple drinks every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. I would say $30 to $50 would be the sweet spot for, like, a comfortable budget backpacking trip. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, some days are going to be less, some days are going to be more, but everything's going to equal out to about that as long as you stay... Yeah, you do. If you're if you're doing, if you're budget backpacking, it's really useful to keep track of your spending. Like we found you have to you have to, because otherwise you're gonna be three months into a six month trip, and you're gonna have not that much money left, and you're gonna have to figure out how to get money or go home. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not fun for either situation, you know. No, but if you are in that situation, start uh, uh, looking into the party hostels because they yeah. have a lot of like work exchange programs. Right. So if it's so something you at least like get that, room and board for free. Yeah, so you get room and board for free. Sometimes you get a little bit of like kickback money as well, and you get to stay somewhere. So right. that's also a way to like offset that charge. Yeah. Which is good. Also, bring U.S. dollars or euros for um, border crossings. Mm-hmm. Because so, and like you for that you want to bring like smaller bills. Like I know like Indonesia is what like thirty six or thirty seven dollars yeah. for like a visa on arrival, and they want exact change they or they want it in local currency. Yeah, they won't give you change in for your foreign exchange. They usually don't have it. 
No, that they will, but they don't want to. Oh. They will typically they they'll have like a dollar or two change, but they'll ask you you don't have exact change. So you want to bring some singles, some fives, like you want to bring some different mm -hmm. pieces or different denominations of the money so that when you do border crossings if you need to get a visa on arrival, you'll have exact change for them, which is a big help. And the people at the border exchange appreciate it, and I don't want to make them angry. Well, that's fair enough, though, because like, so imagine a flight comes in with like 200 people from a certain country, and yeah. then they need uh, all. Everyone doesn't have change. Yeah. So like, that's a disaster. So I guess. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah. they're gonna have a lot of different um, kind of currencies coming in, so like, not everyone's going to pay in U.S. dollars. And then like, you can also have the local currency. So if you already have that currency. Yeah, that's fine. You can. Just that's pay fine. In you currency. can pay in the local currency, and they will 1,000 percent have change for that. Yeah. Uh, the thing with the changes, they'll typically have it, but you may not get, like, the right amount back. So, like, let's right. say it's $37, so they owe you the equivalent of, like, three bucks, right? And they are not giving you three, like, U.S. dollars. It's just talking U.S. dollars. And they don't, and they're not get, they don't have three U.S. dollars to give you for whatever reason, like, whatever it is. They may give you the, e like, they may try to give you somewhat the equal in rupia, which would be the local currency mm -hmm. in Indonesia, but they may not actually give you that. They might give you, like, the equivalent of, like, $2 back. So it's right. not that big of a deal. They'll give you change. You'll get change in one way, shape, or form. But just to keep it even and keep it, like... And make everyone's life easier. To make it easier, bring some singles, bring some fives, bring the different denominations of the bills for border crossings. Done. Mm-hmm. Phone and data situation. Yeah. I would say get a SIM card as you go. Like when you land in a do a little bit of. Uh, Shopping around? No, do a little bit of research for which data plans in the country that you're currently in is going to the be, be the best for the areas you're going to. Don't ask the people at the booth. They're going to no, lie to you and say that you. theirs is the best, even if it's not. So do a little bit of research before you get to the country. See which ones are the best for the regions you're going to be in and get a sim card you can put the data right into your phone they usually cost a few dollars and you'll get so much data and yeah. then if you ever need to top up you can pop into like any convenience store and there's so many places to pop in and you either get a new card or you can top up on your data which is easy now if you're working remotely or you're working with clients like we do so you have to have your phone number that doesn't work for you no we would recommend and this is not sponsored t-mobile international plan yeah I've used them all over the world. You've used them now like all, for a almost lot. a year. Yeah. So with them, you pay a flat rate. I think for one person, it's like $80. $80. Like and it might be a little bit of a discount for two lines. Yeah, something like that. It's like $80 a month for a single person, uh, not including like the phone if you're financing a phone or something. It's $80 a month. And you get the unlimited data, you get unlimited text, and then it's like, tr depending on the country, it's usually about 20 to 25 cents a minute for phone calls. Right. So you can weigh in what's easiest for you. We use the T-Mobile, but if you don't have to have your phone number, get then, the, get the no, SIM card. Get SIM cards, yeah. Get SIM cards. Absolutely. But then, then the other thing we do is we have a hotspot. So we'll get the data SIM card, put it into the hotspot, and then use the that hotspot for... Internet. Uh, tethering, yeah, yeah, to the phones and just to have internet. Yeah. Just in case of emergencies or like if you're in a spotty location that T-Mobile's not working, you know, we've had times where T-Mobile's been very slow. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not saying it's great everywhere we go. It's no, It's usually it not works. that good, but it works. But it works. <laughs> yeah, it's usually not good, but it yeah. works. And then everywhere has Wi-Fi, so you can pop in just about any restaurant cafe even if you that you look at them and you're like i there's don't know why they have wi-fi they have they probably wi have they have wi-fi wi <laughs> they yeah. have wi-fi like we've been in like very small villages and we're like i don't know if we're gonna find one. every like this, single place has wi-fi yeah, it's like this uh, this this restaurant doesn't have running water but they have wi-fi <laughs> yeah so it's fine don't worry about it yeah. packing and the weather the weather is hot Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go is going to be hot, and not only hot, but really humid. So you're going to want to pack light, breathable clothes. And for both men and women, you want it to. You definitely want to make sure you have some modest things in there because if you plan on visiting like any temples, you plan right. on like going like going on to any like villages, you plan on you know going into people's homes or like really interacting with people like on your travels. It's just better to have some modest. Clothing. Items so that's yeah. like covering your shoulders, 
Um, not having like your chest out, covering your knees. Sometimes you have to go all the way under your ankles. Dep it depends on the country. You have to do a little bit of research beforehand. Yeah. Like some countries you need to wear um, a sarong to yep. go in. Some countries you need to wear long pants. And that's, that's for the temples. That's to go into the that's temples. For not temples. In, like, people that's not for everyday walking yeah. around, but for, for to go into temples, which yeah. is what you're going to want to do too, that you definitely need to look ahead and see. Yeah, so you can choose to bring your own sarong or they sell them in every country literally that needs mm -hmm. them in Southeast Asia, they sell them. So yeah. it's, you can decide with what you want to do there. And as far as clothing goes, like they, everyone wears clothes. So no matter where you go, there's going to be clothes if you need to buy but something. But what if someone's like, like particularly tall or has like particularly large feet? Or... So that's something that could potentially um, be an issue. Like if you're very tall or very curvaceous or like, I know I struggle sometimes cause I have a larger, larger chest and like that just isn't something that's accommodated in like your standard Asian sizing, you're going to have to wait until you get into the cities. But if you have any sort of flights like booked, you're probably going to at some point end up in Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Bangkok. You're going to end up in one of those cities at some point. Yeah. And they all have big shopping malls and they all have all of the brands that you are used to shopping at for the most part. Mm -hmm. They'll have a lot of the brands so you can wait till you get into the cities and get the appropriate sizing then. But I would say if you have particularly large feet, like a size like 14, 15, they may not even carry that no. size shoe in the cities. So you might want to make sure you have the appropriate shoes. But on the point of shoes, you really only need three pairs. In yeah. my opinion, you need three pairs. You need running sneakers, some sort of like sandal that you can also shower in and hiking boots. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. Or even hiking sneakers or... or yeah, yeah, like if you do like trekking shoes, yeah. then like you might not need... It could need... be a little bit lighter if you didn't want the boots. But, yeah. yeah, like you could just... Like if you plan on not doing like big mountains or big like multiple day climbs, then you could probably just get away with like a good treaded sneaker or mm. like trekking shoes. And then you could also use those to like run or like walk around all day mostly. Because yeah. when you're walking around all day, like... I don't know. Sometimes I just want like a sneaker. Yeah, if especially if you're around a city or like in a in a town or village, and you're not planning on like going hiking up hills or anything like yeah. that, it's it's more comfy. It's lighter. It's a lot more comfortable than just being a sneaker. But having said that, don't go out and buy all new shoes just before you leave. You learned that when the hard I way. I learned that the hard way with my adventure sandals. I wore them, and they had like crease blisters in the bottom of my feet after like two days of wearing them in Vietnam and I was like, oh my God, I've made such a big mistake buying these sandals. What, have I, what was I thinking? And then eventually, okay, after a week it was fine, but do not try and break them in on the way because you don't realize how many hours, when you first get backpacking, how many hours you're gonna be on your feet for every day. It's crazy. You're on your feet going for like 10, 12 hours a day non-stop at so, least we are i don't know if yeah, everyone yeah. does that but that's how i but travel like, i mean like even like getting to the airport and getting on the bus and getting finding your accommodation all of that takes a long time you don't know yeah. where you're going you're on your feet like you've got a ba huge backpack on maybe another pack as well it's a lot of weight the last thing you want to do is be worrying about your feet yeah you know? i agree with that yeah uh also rain jacket Bring a rain jacket yeah, with you. A, Bring a, a lightweight. A light one. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't have anything. to be like a lined rain jacket. Like we both Just have. A, what, what do they call them? A, a shell? I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what they call them. Yeah, you're going to wear it probably a lot more. Than you think. Than you think. Because no one wants to be standing in the rain. So mine has a hood, but you don't necessarily need a hood on it. Mm. And anything else that for pack. Oh, layers. Pack layers. Yeah. Definitely. Because if you, I mean, for the most part, it is super humid, super hot. But the moment you decide to go and like hike up a mountain or get any kind of elevation, all of a sudden it's going to be freezing. So if all you have is like booty shorts and tank tops, you're going to be seriously uncomfortable. Or you're going to just have to buy stuff in like the village at the base of where you are, right. which is also no big deal. Yeah. But definitely a rain jacket, definitely some layers. I usually bring... A, like a button up flannel because I'll wear that like in the evenings like over a bathing suit because sometimes in the evenings it just gets a little chilly and then like a zip up like a right. thin like zip up jacket but if you like a hoodie if you like a whatever it is you like just bring one of those yeah 
But even like the, for layers, even going around like Bangkok, you don't. Bangkok's really hot all year it's round. So hot. But like you don't want layers on. But as soon as you walk into a mall, they are blasting the air conditioning. Yeah. Like you'll be like shivers. It's so cold. So you might want to just grab something out of your bag and throw it on when you're in there, because mm -hmm. you might be in there for a couple hours walking around. They're huge. Just some of the biggest malls I've ever seen. Yeah. But then having said that, on top of your clothes that you're wearing on your skin, the stuff that you, when, you're, when your skin's exposed, the sun there is, is different to what we're used to in Europe and in America. It's a lot stronger. You get burned a lot more and it's, it, you don't even realize it and it's so fast. You want to be bringing sun cream. And if you're going anywhere near any water or swimming or anything like that, you want to be getting reef safe sun cream. Yeah, for you sure. do. That is very hard to find out there. It's going to be a specialist for the reef reef safe stuff it's going to be like a surf shop or something like that is going to be the only place and it's going to be actually, expensive and it's going to be very expensive it's going to be very expensive i think we probably bought like 10 bottles of sun cream for the six months we we're gone mm -hmm. because i'm such i have such fair skin and i get burned in like 10 minutes like that it's it's just we had to bring it and we had a bunch of them that were going out of date so we brought them all yeah we brought all of them and we so got through all right of them we ended up having to buy like one or two extra bottles while we we're out there but at least we didn't buy 12 bottles while we we're out there yeah you know? yeah so i i made sure that we packed that because i knew before we went yeah and right i was like it's fine we don't have to bring all that sun cream i'll be fine and i'm like no you have no idea like you have to bring it you have to cover up like your skin is not going to be happy yeah no 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 my skin will get used to it and i'm like no 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 it no it did not it will not <laughs> it did not get you're used like to it. no no no. i'll be fine i'll be I'm fine like, i'm not going outside i don't have sun cream <laughs> <laughs> i'm like brian it's 6 a.m the sun's barely out. yeah i can't go outside because there's no i have no sun cream on yet yeah, so sun cream definitely. Definitely sun cream. As far and then as far as things that you have to bring, there's very few things that you can't get there. But um, ladies, if you prefer tampons, bring mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Bring all the tampons that you're gonna want because they are not gonna sell them there. And if they do, again, they're gonna be very expensive and they're gonna be really hard to find. So bring the tampons that you want. If you like a, a menstrual cup, make sure you bring your cup with you because you're probably not gonna be able to find a replacement when you're out there. And I, th and like, yeah, if you like like the period panties and stuff, bring them because again, you're probably not going to be able to find them out there. The only option is really uh, pads. pads. Out there, right? Yeah. So if that's not your preference, then make sure you bring whatever your preference is because it just makes it easier and it will be cheaper to buy at home than mm. it will be out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is it for packing. Our fifth and final thing is just let things happen. Yeah. Just let it happen. The bus is going to be late. It's just, gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. It might not show up. It might not show up. You might miss it. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get opportunities. Say yes. Yeah. You know, always use your brain and listen to your gut, but let things happen. Make new friends. Right. You know, get out of your comfort zone. That's what you're traveling for. You're traveling yeah. to learn, to have new experiences, to meet new people, to develop your own like open-mindedness and develop a different viewpoint of the world. So let yourself just be in the moment and like leave everything at home that, that mm -hmm. was going on. Leave like everything and just go and live in the moment and let things happen and go with the flow and everything's gonna work out and you're gonna have an amazing trip and the best time of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, a lot of people fall into the trap of like trying to plan every little thing. Yes. And like, oh, we have to be here for two days. We're going to be here for three days. We're going to be here just for one day. We're going to stay here overnight, but we're going to sleep on the bus on the way to here. Like, all that's good and it lets you maximize your amount of time. But at the same time, you will miss out on some of the more, like, intimate and, like, authentic experiences that you will get from interacting with locals and... And like the people you meet on the road, all of that is just, you can't plan for that. Yeah, especially if you're solo traveling. Because if you're solo traveling and you say in like more social hostels, like a party hostel or just even a social hostel, everyone else is usually also solo traveling. So you make friends really quickly. And those friends will be like, oh yeah, a group of us are getting on this boat. And we heard about this really small little island off the coast of wherever. Yeah. Like. And we're th we think we're going to go out and stay a couple days. Do you want to join? And if your itinerary is already so planned to a T of everywhere you need to be, like you're not going to be able to take those amazing opportunities right. to just go and be like, you know what? Yes. Yes. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let And then 
and it's just like it's just cool yeah and that could be like one of the opportunities like that could be a, an experience that you'll be t thinking about like years down the line like oh my god i had so much fun when i went with it. Yeah. all my friends that like we just met each other the day before and we all went out to this island and like whatever we were doing but like don't miss out on those like those they're once in a lifetime opportunities really and you don't see them like you might even notice that they're Occurring, presenting themselves yeah. until like you're like oh wow that was like really cool yeah mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even know it's happening until after it's happened so yeah. just let things happen just go and like do your research see what you want to do in each city to write down the places you want to see the tourist spots you want to stop at and then as far as the next move leave it up yeah. leave it up to to the universe <laughs> yeah just leave it up to the universe and what's going to happen next because whatever you need is going to come to you who you're supposed to meet is going to come to you and just keep keep your wit and your gut about you and and if something feels off obviously don't do it if yeah. something feels excited but you're a little nervous about it that's that's okay to be nervous mm -hmm. yeah. i think it's the fine line between t being able to tell like if is it just my anxiety am i just feeling nervous am i just you know, this is new, so I feel uncomfortable. And that feeling of, oh no. This isn't good. This yeah. isn't good. And when the oh no hits, you don't question it. Right. The oh no feeling, you know every time. You know what it reminds me of? This is like kind of random. But it reminds me of like when you're outside and you're like see a big bird fly, fly across. And you go, wow, is that a hawk? And you question if it's in a hawk. If you're questioning it, it's not a hawk. It's usually like some weird turkey vulture <laughs> yeah. or like some, um, like a big crow that just like came across. And you're like, wow, is that? Oh no. But then when you see a hawk fly over, you, you go, know. wow, that's a hawk. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing when you're, th when you're trying to listen to your gut. Like when it's like a, oh, I don't know if I should do this. Maybe this is scary. I don't know. You have that question. Like, is this scary? Is this whatever? Right. But when it's actual in danger, you get that feeling and you go, this is bad. Like I need to get out of here now. Yeah. So just learn how to listen to your own body and listen to those warning signs from yourself. And you're going to be fine. And you're going to have so much fun. And I'm so excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want, The things I do to go backpacking through Southeast Asia for the first time again. Yeah, it is like, it's amazing. It really is. If, like everyone should try and at least do it once in their lifetime. I, I would go back tomorrow if I could, especially with the weather here right now because it's so cold. But um, yeah, just just enjoy yourself and, and keep your head screwed on straight and it's going to be good. Yeah. It is cold. So I think we're ending there. That is it for this week's episode of the Rangeless Travel Podcast. If you want more of us, you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify, all at Rangeless underscore. Until next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>